Let's take a look at some horizontal projectile problems. Number one, a tiger leaps horizontally from a 7.5 meter high rock with a speed of 4.5 meters per second. How far from the base of the rock will she land? Well, let's start by drawing a picture. There's our rock. There's our tiger, and the tiger is going to leap with a speed of 4.5 meters per second horizontally. And the height of the rock is 7.5 meters. How far from the base of the rock will she land? So we're looking for that distance. When the tiger lands right there. Well, this is a projectile problem, so let's take a look in both the horizontal and the vertical directions. Horizontally, there's no acceleration. Gravity doesn't pull you sideways, so we can use V average D and T. And vertically, we'll go to our standard V, I, V, F, D, A, and T. Now, what do we know from the problem? Horizontally, the tiger speed is 4.5 meters per second. We want to know D. We don't know time yet, so let's go to our vertical table. Vertically, the tiger's initial speed is zero. Even though the tiger's moving horizontally, vertically, no speed at the initial part of the tiger's leap. The displacement, if we call down the positive direction, is going to be 7.5 meters until she hits the ground, and the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared down. We know three things we can always solve for the other two. We want to know t because that will allow us to place that over in our horizontal table to figure out how far from the base of the rock the tiger will land. So we can use the equation d equals vit plus one half at squared. In this case, vi is zero, so that term goes away. d equals one half at squared. If we solve for t, t equals the square root of 2d over a, or 2 times 7.5 meters over 9.81 meters per second squared, square root, and we come up with an answer of t equal to plus or minus about 1.2 seconds. Now, of course, in this case, we're going to pick the positive root, 1.2 seconds. We'll plug that into our horizontal table. And now we have enough information to solve using v equals d over t for the horizontal distance. That means that d equals v average times t, or 4.5 meters per second, times 1.2 seconds. And I get that d equals roughly 5.4 meters. There's one. Let's go take a look at number two. Now we have a seagull flying horizontally with a constant speed of 2.7 meters per second when it releases a clam from its beak. The clam lands on the rocky beach 2.1 seconds later. And we want to find out some information. Well, let's draw our seagull. There's its tail. We'll give it a wing. Looks a little bit more like an airplane than a seagull, but okay, close enough. There's our seagull. It's flying horizontally at 2.7 meters per second. It's going to drop a clam. Clam is going to fall to the earth, and it takes 2.1 seconds for the clam to hit the ground below. Just before the clam lands, A, what is its horizontal velocity? Well, horizontally, the clam must be going the same speed as the spiegel, as the seagull, since there is no horizontal acceleration all the way until it hits the ground. To find out its vertical velocity right before it hits the ground, though. The initial speed of the clam vertically is zero. Horizontally, it's going 2.7 meters per second. Vertically, not at all when it's first released. D, we don't know. A is 9.81 meters per second squared. Like and we know the time is 2.1 seconds. Now we're looking for Vf. Well, we could use our formula, Vf equals Vi plus At. Substitute in with units, Vf equals Vi, that's zero. So A, 9.81 meters per second squared down, times our time, 2.1 seconds. And I get a final velocity vertically of about 20.6 
meters per second. Now finally in part C, it asks us, how would your answers to parts A and B change if the speed of the seagull were increased? Well, A, if the speed of the seagull were increased, that means when it releases the clam, it's going to increase as well. So that would increase. B, though, the vertical velocity isn't going to change no matter how fast it goes horizontally. Therefore, no change in the vertical velocity right before it hits the ground. And of course, we're neglecting air resistance in these problems. Let's go to number three. Wiley Coyote is chasing Roadrunner with a velocity of 12 meters per second when he accidentally runs off the cliff. So there's Coyote. He's going 12 meters per second off a 100 meter cliff. What velocity does Wiley Coyote strike the ground? This is a little bit tricky because horizontally, Wiley Coyote has a velocity of 12 meters per second. That's going to remain the same. Vertically, let's figure out what his velocity is. Vertically, his initial velocity is zero again. We want to find VF. Placement, we'll call down the positive direction, must be 100 meters. 100 meters per second squared. However, we can use our kinematic equations here. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD to solve for VF. So VF squared equals 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times our displacement of 100 meters. And I get a VF squared of right around, well, when I take and just take VF, I get plus or minus 44.3 meters per second. And in this case, of course, that must be positive. We call down the positive direction, and right before he hits the ground, Coyote is moving down. So with what velocity does he strike the ground? Well, we've got a horizontal component of 12 meters per second, a vertical component of 44.3 meters per second. To find the resultant, or total velocity, we add our vectors by lining up tip to tail and drawing a line from the starting point of the first to the ending point of the last. That will be our V total. We can find that total must be the square root of 12 meters per second squared plus 44.3 meters per second squared, which comes out to be 45.9 meters per second as his total velocity right before he strikes the ground. Horizontally, he's moving 12 meters per second. Vertically, he's moving 44.3 meters per second. Put those together, combine the vectors for a total velocity, and we get 45.9 meters per second. Let's see if we can't take this type of problem a little bit further. Coyote is again chasing Roadrunner, this time with the velocity of 120 meters per second because he launched himself with a cannon. So same basic picture, 120 meters per second, 100 meter cliff. With what velocity does he strike the ground? Well, now horizontally, we know Coyote is going 120 meters per second. And vertically, nothing changes. It's still a 100 meter cliff. He still starts with an initial velocity of zero vertically. So his final velocity vertically must be exactly what it was up here in our previous problem. 44.3 meters per second. So let's pull that down here. 44.3 meters per second. And now when we combine these, we've got a horizontal velocity of 120 meters per second, a vertical velocity of 44.3 meters per second. So use the Pythagorean theorem, line our vectors up tip to tail, draw a straight line from the starting point of our first, to the ending point of our last. Total velocity for Coyote right before he strikes the ground is going to be the square root of 120 meters per second squared plus 44.3 meters per second squared for a total velocity of roughly 128 meters per second. Excellent. That leaves us just one more. 
An F-16 is flying horizontally at 300 meters per second. All right, so we've got an F-16. Looks a lot like our seagull. Flying horizontally at 300 meters per second. With an altitude of 8 kilometers or 8,000 meters above the ground. And of course, that's not drawn to scale. It releases a bomb. How far will the bomb travel horizontally before it strikes the ground? Well, let's take a look. Horizontally, the bomb's velocity must be the same as the plane when it's released, so that has to be 300 meters per second. We're trying to find how far it goes horizontally, and we don't know the time. So just like we did in problem one, let's look at the vertical aspect of the bomb to figure out how long it's in the air. Vertically, we'll call down positive again, VI is zero. It has no initial vertical velocity. We don't know VF. D is 8,000 meters, our displacement 8,000 meters down. Acceleration due to gravity 9.81 meters per second squared. And T is what we want to know. So once again, we can pick a kinematic equation. In this case, it looks like D equals VIT plus one half AT squared will be the most useful. VI is zero, so that term goes away. D equals one half AT squared, and when I rearrange that, I find that T equals square root of 2D over A, which is two times 8,000 meters over 9.81 meters per second squared, square root. And when I do all that, I get T is plus or minus about 40.4 seconds, and we'll choose the positive root because the negative root doesn't make sense here. Otherwise, the bomb would hit the ground before it was released. We can use that time over here in our horizontal problem. And once again, we can use V average equals D over T, or D equals V average T to find our horizontal distance of 300 meters per second times 40.4 meters per second for a total horizontal displacement of 12,100 meters, or 12.1 kilometers. Hope this helped you out. Again, the keys here, separating your horizontal and vertical tables, and realizing what is shared between the two is the time. The time is the only thing that's the same between those two tables. Good luck. We'll see you next time.